Okay, today we're going to learn about Access and how to build a Access database using an example that I have posted on my Canvas page. So we can download the survey paper that we use to build the survey. Um, we can click on that and download it. I already have it downloaded here. And this was done a couple years ago, or a few years ago by Westminster College. Um, we asked um, respondents to fill this out, and they could pick freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, major, they could pick business, education, nursing, arts and sciences undeclared, whether they um, attended a past May term or not, and whether they're currently in, uh, registered for the upcoming May term. And then they um, rank their interest in a May term trip from one not interested to five very interested. Then they could choose areas um, they want to visit. They could choose countries or list countries they want to um, go to in those regions. Then they indicate their highest, highest willingness to pay for such a trip. And then they check mark one of these um, characteristics of the trip of their experience. And then they can write in another important component. Um, this was already done. The data is already in a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet, and I'll show you that to you down here. So this is the survey worksheet. On survey number one, a sophomore, undeclared, uh, that person was not on a past May term, is currently not registered for a May term, has an interest of five in a May term trip, but is only willing to pay $2,000 for the trip. And then an important component of this trip would be to learn something with an entirely different perspective. Okay, so that's the first worksheet. In the second worksheet, we have the areas survey. And it's just a little table from the survey form itself. It looks familiar, doesn't it? Areas of interest right here, right? So you can just actually copy and paste this into Excel to make this little table right here. Then we have a list of countries, and I actually got these countries. We can you can actually get these countries from a website. You can type in list of country names, and then you can order country ID from one to whatever the last one is. Zimbabwe 194 and then you can just paste in your list of countries from a website um, so that's where that came from and then we have experience and this again is from the word document the original survey form down here we just you can literally just copy this into Excel um, as text and paste it right here so that's where that is now um, this stuff is inputted by the person building this survey. Okay, these things here. This information from survey one down, these are filled in by the people conducting the survey after getting um, respondents to fill out the paper. So you, you just type this stuff in. Um, from a stack of papers and we have how many surveys here we have 170 now over here in link area I call this link area because it's going to link areas to survey in Excel over here kind of prevents the problem right presents the problem this respondent the first respondent picked area number two area number three area number four area number five area number six and area number seven to visit and again, those areas are right here. So we, we coded, instead of writing the name out, we coded it as numbers. So we gotta, we gotta somehow figure that out. And then same thing with link country. The first respondent listed a lot of countries, right, that they wanted to visit. And instead of typing them out um, individually, we just used the code. And then a link experience, that first respondent chose four um, experiences that they are yet yeah, they want to have so instead of typing them out again we just used codes from the original survey data or the survey forms 
Okay, so that's basically what we have to do is we have to combine these uh, five worksheets or these um, seven worksheets into a database in Excel. Okay, so now I'm going to set this aside. I'll go ahead and save it. Um, you'll probably want to save it on your uh, Westminster H drive. I'll save it as um, an Excel uh, file in um, my access folder. And I think I already have it in there. Yeah, I already have it in there, so save, yes. Okay, now I can set that aside. And I can set this aside. So imagine that, uh, I don't know, 154 of these surveys being filled out, right, with students circling things and writing in things, um, and then having to take it from paper into Excel's kind of a mon monumental task. Um, taking it from Excel to Access is pretty straightforward. Um, so let me show you how to do that. So we're going to go ahead and close that out. And we can now minimize this. You'll submit your Access prod, uh, tutorial here. So after you um, take the Excel stuff, put it in Access, and do some queries after you build a database system, then you'll click on this link here, and you'll upload. Whoop, i got to show you the student view. Sorry. Let me show you student view. Okay, so you come down here and you click on Access Tutorial and you can submit the assignment here. So you'll, um, you'll submit um, the Access database right here. Okay, so I can, I can uh, get rid of that. All right, so let's open up Access. And we're going to create a new blank desktop database. And just click Create. And we'll go ahead and save it as. OK. We'll go ahead and save it as in my Access Tutorial. We'll save it here as. Uh, access tutorial okay and go ahead and click on that and then now we're going to um, go ahead and get external data we're going to get it from Excel so we're going to import an Excel spreadsheet okay so we have to find it yours will probably be in the H drive you'll go down here to the H drive mine's called H snar Instead of doing that, I'm going to go to my access, um, quick access um, folder here, access, and I'm going to click on May Term Survey. Okay, and then I'm going to hit open. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this path. I'm going to copy this path so I don't have to do that over and over and over. And then I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to bring in the first survey. And this looks just like what we had done, right? The first survey respondent was a sophomore, undeclared, uh, no past May term, not registered for a current May trip, has an interest of five in going on a May term trip, but is only willing to pay $2,000. Remember, we, we talked about that, right? So I'll hit next, and I'm going to click first row contains column headers, which it does, the names of the columns. And then that's fine, that's fine. Um, I'll hit next and I'm going to choose my own primary key if I don't choose the primary key what does access do it creates an identical one that's identical to survey number so we don't need this we just need survey number so we're going to choose my own and we're going to pick survey number and then hit next and finish I right, click that if you want yeah, well, just close. Okay, now if I open this up and view it, it looks just like it did in Excel, right? We can delete all these fields out here. Whoops. Sometimes there's ghost data in cells. We're going to go ahead and delete that. 
And then we'll go down here to make sure there's no ghost data below. There is no ghost data below here. So this is where you'd put the next entry, right? This asterisk next one. So if you redid the survey and you wanted to extend it, you can enter your data right here directly in, Excel, in Access. Okay, so let's go get the next spreadsheet. Or the next worksheet. And hey, this time it um, remembered. Sometimes Access doesn't do that. That's why I copied it. But it remembered my path. Did it? It didn't really remember that well. Then hit OK. Now we're going to click on Areas, and then Next. And then First Row contains Column Headers, Areas ID, and Area. This is fine. And then we can choose our own primary key. And then we're going to call it Areas, and then Finish, and then Close. And if we look at Areas, it looks just like it did, again, in um, Excel. And the reason why we want to open it is because we want to see if there's any ghost data. Data that um, when you import from Excel, sometimes you import empty columns and empty rows. We want to make sure there's no empty columns and empty rows. So we can go ahead and close both these out. And we'll go get our next table. And again, we need to paste in our path to our spreadsheet file. We'll go to Countries, and we hit Next. First row contains column headings. The name of the columns right there. Next. That's fine. Um, choose my own primary key. We're going to use Country ID. Next. Call it Countries and Finish. And then Close. And again, we're going to open it up. Make sure there's no empty rows and empty columns. There isn't, so we can close that out. And we just keep doing this. So the next one, paste in my my path to my uh, spreadsheet. We're going to Experiences. Next, first row, column headings, yes. Fine. She's my own primary key. Next, finish, close. Open it up, make sure there's no empty rows, empty columns, close it out. Okay, now we gotta get the link tables, paste in my path. Um, we're gonna get link area. Again, link area is gonna link areas to the survey table. And this is coded. These are coded here, right? Per areas table. And then hit next, next, next. She's primary key, next, and oh, one thing here. These are both going to be primary keys. The link tables are pri both are primary keys. And we'll define that when we edit the table. Next, and finish. OK, close. OK, well, we got two more to go. Paste the path to my spreadsheet. Um, link country, next, next, next. She's my own primary key. Again, both of these are going to be primary keys, and I'll show you that in a second. And then finish. Close. Let's see, experiences. Okay, good. Wide that up a little bit so we can see it all. I already did this one. Link area. Okay, link country. Looks good. Any extra rows? Go to the very bottom. Whoop. The 170th survey respondent picked two countries. Link area, 170, had two areas they wanted to visit. Okay, that looks good. And then let's get 
the final one, the final worksheet from our pasted in path to our spreadsheet. The last one is link experience. Next, next. Next, primary key, next, finish, close. And we'll just open that one up to make sure everything looks good. All looks good here. No extra rows, no extra columns. Close that out. Okay, so now we have um, all the tables that we need for this database, okay? So the next thing we have to do is we have to go through and uh, format the tables using design view. So for survey number, a couple things we're going to look for is this. Um, so the survey, we're going to do design view here. And we're going to make sure that this um, survey number is auto number. Well, we'll just... We can just have it as number. Um, year in college, short text. Major school, short text. Past May term, we're going to change that to yes, no. Current May term, we're going to change that to a yes, no. Interest in May term. That's going to be um, I think that's fine. And then highest cost, we're going to change that. And then important component um, for important component, I think we're fine here. We'll do long text actually, long text because people might be a little long-winded. Okay, for survey number, I think we're all right. Now in uh, year college, we're going to change this to a combo box. Let's change this down here to a combo box to define the values that um, the importer. So if we have somebody building the, the uh, survey database, um, or we might have somebody else put the information in if we redo this survey in the future. So we may want to have a, to limit the number of misspellings and whatnot, or um, alternate ways of saying it, we're gonna create a value list here. And our row source is gonna be freshmen. So people that will take the survey that is uh, finished by the respondent on the piece of paper are going to um, be able to enter this information by just doing a uh, drop-down menu. Okay, so we have freshmen in quotation marks. I'm not sure if you can see that, but this is quote. We have lookup, combo box, value list, and then in row source we have quote freshman, unquote, semicolon, and then soph sophomore in quotes. and then semicolon, and then junior in quotes, and then senior in quotes. All right, so I think everything else looks good. We'll go to the next one. The next one, again, we're going to do, we're going to change it on the lookup tab down here. After we clicked on short text, we're going to click on the lookup tab. Then we'll click on down here and we'll go over here to this drop down menu and again do a combo box. And then we're going to pick a value list. We're going to use a value list. And then for the row source, we're going to have, um, I'll go ahead and open up Word. I should have left my Word document open. I'm just going to grab it here and copy it. What I'm going to do actually is I'm going to put quotation marks here. Quotation mark, semicolon, quotation mark. I'm going to copy this, paste it here. Why reinvent the wheel, right? 
Then I'm going to copy this into Access. Right on the row source. Okay. And everything else looks good. Okay, then we'll go. We got May term. Interest in May term. Again, we're going to do a combo box to make sure there's no errors made when people are putting in new information. If we do the survey again in the future, we can limit the number of errors made. So we're going to change that to a value list. And then here it's just a simple one, semicolon two, semicolon three, semicolon four, semicolon five. So if you remember, that was the scale here, one to five, right? Okay, let's go back to access. And everything else looks good. Okay, and then we'll click on highest cost. Again, we wanna, we don't want any, we don't want the person inputting the data from the survey forms that were filled out by respondents and putting in any any values. We want to limit the number of values that can be put in. So we're going to, do, again, create a uh, combo box. We're going to use the value list. And again, I'm going to go back here to Word. And I'm going to put a, a colon between all of these. Instead of typing them out again, I'll just put a colon in here. It'll be easier. And this will be copied into that um, access. Into access. Oops. Copy. I'll paste that right into here, row source. Okay, and then I think we're fine here, so that's good. Now we'll close this out, save it. Yes. Now if we open it up and view it, it's gonna look cool. We're gonna have yes, no's, right? Yes, checked. Um, drop down menu. If we go down here at the bottom, if we want to add another row, Go down here and we can do a drop down menu. See how that works? Drop down menu. What about the quotation marks are in there? Let's figure that out. Let's go to design view. Maybe it didn't like words, quotation marks that we copied in. Yeah. You didn't like words, quotation marks. The quotation marks I got from Word are slanted. The quotation marks I'm typing in now are not. So it might have been just easier to do the quotation marks or just type it in here manually. It's funny how Access and uh, Word don't play well together. So we can close this out and then we'll double check it again. Double click to open it up and then scroll to the bottom and see what the menus look like now. So that's good. Oh, there, the, see the quotation marks are gone. We can click yes, no, yes, no, or whatever. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And then here we have the dollar values. Okay. Um, one last thing. Let's go back to uh, design view. We'll change it to currency and then close this out. Yes. And we open up survey again. It should be in dollar values. There we go. Everything's in dollar values. And I think what we'll do is we'll go back to design view and we'll click on highest cost, look up tab, and we'll just get rid of the dollar values, the dollar signs. We don't need them. 
because we formatted, I'm getting rid of the dollar signs here. Because I formatted this as dollars anyway, so it's kind of redundant to have the dollar signs in there. Okay, so now we got $1,500, not $1,500, $2,000, not $2,000, et cetera, et cetera, all the way out to 6000 So let's go ahead and save again, and uh, we'll view it again. Yeah, so everything's in dollars over here. And if we were to, yeah, there we go. And then we, we'll go ahead and delete, yeah. Just delete that. Okay, so let's close this out and not save it. Okay, we'll open it back up. And uh, you gotta be careful when you're entering data and see what that row is gone. Okay. All right, so we got the survey um, worksheet or um, table formatted. Um, let's format the areas. Let's close this out. We'll format the areas. And the thing you have to note here is the data type of areas ID is double here. So open up area link areas. Okay, so if I go to design view on link areas, area number is double, number double, and areas ID is number and double. They have, the, they have to have the identical data types. Okay, and it's probably best to use long integer. It's, I guess you could say it's less glitchy. You run into fewer problems if you use long integer. So let's just change it to long integer to avoid any issues. Okay, so we're gonna change all of our um, primary keys to long integers. Okay, so areas, primary key is a long integer. Countries, design view, countries ID is gonna be a long integer. Experience, design view, experience ID is gonna be a long integer. Um, survey, design view, we're gonna change survey number to long integer. Okay, so let's just uh, double check countries, long integer, Experience, ID, long integer, areas, ID, long integer. So we can close that out. Uh, close out experience. It's data type is long integer in the primary key. Countries, country ID, number, uh, did have the long integer, close that out. And then survey, survey number, long integer, close that out. Okay, now for link area, both of these have to be primary keys. So we're gonna go ahead and highlight them, both of them, and then click the primary key button, okay? So you see the little key right there? Both these are primary keys. Because link area is the table that links link area to survey, okay? And we wanna make sure both of these are long integers. They have the data type of long integer. So area number has a long integer data type. Survey number has a long integer data type. Let's open up uh, link country design view. 
And again, we want to make both of these primary keys. So you, you highlight them with your mouse and you click the primary key button and you should get two little keys here. And the first one, we're going to change that to long integer. Change the second one, data type to long integer. And just double check, long integer, long integer. And then the last table, design view. Um, again, we need two primary keys here. And then we're going to change that data type to long integer. Change this data type to long integer. So double check, long integer, long integer, close that out. Link country, serving number is long integer, country number, long integer, close that out. And then link area and survey number, long integer, close that out. Let's just double check to make sure everything looks good. Link area, we have multiple survey ones, and these are unique over here. So we have survey respondent number two, picking area two and area five, so it looks good. Link country, survey respondent number one, wants to go to a lot of different places, and each one of these are unique. And then link experience. Survey response number one has four choices for type of experience they want to have on their midterm trip. These are unique to each survey respondent. And these are dupl their duplicates here. Okay, now I think we're ready to build the database, the relationships, a relational database, RDBS. Okay, so now we got those set up. We can go to Database Tools, Relationships, and I'm gonna go ahead and just close that out because I'll just drag them out. I'm gonna put Survey in the middle, and I'll make it big enough you can, so you can see everything. And you can see that there's a primary key at Survey Number. And then, because areas and countries are similar, I'm gonna put them over on the right, And I'm gonna shrink this up, make it look good. Okay, this is my countries table, this is my areas table. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the experiences over on this side. Okay, so this little table, this is a little table with a few area numbers. This is a table with 194 countries. And this is a little table with one to six type of experiences plus a memo. And then uh, I'm gonna drag the link area so that it's between survey and areas. And notice that these four tables each have one primary key. But the table that links areas to survey has two primary keys. I'll drag link country in between country and survey and again, notice that link country has two primary keys. And then I drag link experience in between experience and survey. Two primary keys, two primary keys, two primary keys. Now, although they're named differently, they refer to the same things. So we're going to drag area ID area number we'll click that and that those two boxes there and then we'll hit create and if you did it right you'll get an infinity here and a one there and you'll drag country ID to country number and then again click that and that and you'll get create and again you'll get infinity and then a one here this means many many to one many to one now because this is a survey number we need to connect this table to this table using survey number to survey number. Again, click those two things 
hit create, survey number to survey number, click those two things, and then create, survey number to survey number, create, and again, you should get many to one. And then experience number to experience, I mean, experience ID to experience number, they're the different names, but they refer to the same thing. And then click those two things and then create. Okay, one issue we still have, we have the relational database build, but one of the problems we still have is if we click on link area, it's still coded. Link country, still on code. Link experience, still on code. So what we have to do is we have to edit each one of these. We have to do these queries, if you will. Because um, we want to populate this with these countries based on these codes. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to go to Design View. And we're going to click on Area Number. Instead of having an Area Number 1 and Area. So we're going to click on Data Type and then go to Look Up. We're going to change Text Box to a Combo Box. Only this time we're going to do a query. A very very simple query and so we're gonna click on this down arrow here whoop click on that and then we're gonna double click on areas because that's where the country names or those area names are close that out and then the first thing we're gonna click on is area ID and then area and then here we're gonna do ascending we could do alphabetical but we'll do ascending here well we can do ascending here and then delete those Okay, and then we'll go ahead and run it, and that's what you get. So it shouldn't be anything surprising. We'll go ahead and close it out and save it. Then let's go back into link area, right? So you can see the SQL code right here. Select from areas, area ID, areas.area. So we want the area ID and the area from the table areas. We're going to order by order by area. But instead of uh, one column, we're going to change it to two. Because the first column is the area number, the next, well the first one's the area number, the next one's the area name. So we need two columns. In the first column, we're going to set it equal to zero, and then set the second column to two. And we'll close this out and save it. Now when we open up link area, you don't see area numbers here. It's no longer coded. You see the names, which is what we want. So let's go ahead and close that out. Now we need to, we need to replicate that for link country and link experience. So let's do link country first. We'll go to design view. Click on country number, because we don't want country number, do we? We want the country number. We want the country name. So we'll go down to lookup. Click the lookup tab change text box to combo box, leave it at table query, and then we're gonna run a little, uh, we're gonna run a little query here, and we're gonna click on countries, and then again, we'll, whoop, we got two of them, I double clicked. Click on country ID and country, and then order sort by countries, alphabetical. They're already in alphabetical order, but that's all right. Then we'll hit run, and then we get this, the code in the country. We'll close this out and save it. And then we're going to, again, from the countries table, the first column is country ID, the second column is country, and then we're ordering by countries. So we have two columns here. We only want one. So we're going to make that two because we do have two columns here. And then the column widths will be zero and two inches. Then we'll close this out and save it. And then if we click on link country now, we'll get the survey number and the country name, not number. Okay. Before we had code here, right? So we'll close that out and say yes, save it. Now we want to replace these codes again with the type of experience that the students want. So we'll go to design view, 
Click on experience number data type. Go down here to look up tab. Change the text box to combo box. And then we want a table query. We're going to run a little query here from experience. Close that out. Double click on experience ID. And then experience. And then we'll sort ascending on ID. Just for the heck of it. Change it up. Run that. Okay, then we close it out. Yes. And notice we have this query, this SQL code in here. Again, we have two columns. We're going to change the first column to two columns. The first column will have a width of zero. The second will have a width of two. We close out. Save. Then we can double click on experience. Whoop, sorry, link experience. And you can see that um, our our um, codes here have been replaced with the type of experience. Okay. And so we have our RDBS, Relational Database System. Okay. In the next video, we're going to use this database system to do some queries, which essentially are just a bunch of tables, you know, summary tables, frequency tables, or pivot charts, or pivot tables. Okay, thank you.